let's show you some ways for actually freeing up the sciatic nerve. Now, sciatic can, uh, can be caused by a lot of different things, either problems with the disc or peripheral nerve entrapment. A lot of people don't really understand how common this is and the fact that whether it's a disc or not, you can actually do a lot of manual therapy to get over this. The majority of disc problems do not need surgery. So, we're going to focus on the sciatic nerve in this particular session. So, one of the first things I want to do is I actually want to get up and work our way near the lumbar nerve roots. You okay there, Minnie? Yeah. Good. And so, the nerve roots are coming off of the, right along the crest here is uh, iliac crest L5. So, all the way up from L4 down to S3 is where the nerve roots are coming together and actually forming the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve goes through the hip here is about as wide as my thumb. So actually it's a very, very large nerve. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna free up this area in here. So I'm gonna bring Nikki's leg over here. And are you comfortable there? Go ahead. Okay. So you wanna make sure the hip is going into flexion, knee into an extension. And we're gonna bring the foot a little bit into dorsiflexion as we go across here. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is get down here and actually kind of get in there a little bit like that. Well, I'm gonna go from supination to pronation. You doing okay there? Oh yeah. Feeling that a bit? Yep. Okay. So let's just free up the uh, area here a little bit in terms of the fascia, the connective tissue. Now we're going to go through and we're going to start flossing this in just a second here. So Mickey, I want you to bring your head back into extension okay. as I take your leg forward here and okay. then dorsiflex the foot. You okay? Yeah, 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 we're good. <laughs> and then we're going to come back here a little bit. So I'm just on this area right here in the lower lumbar spine. Good, excellent. And then I'm going to come across and work my way down a little bit towards the hip. Now, we're going to actually work our way down, but we're going to free this up through several different techniques and procedures. You doing okay there? Yep. And back. And again. Good. And back. You doing okay? That's a good spot. Okay. So now I'm going to start working down the initial tuberosity going underneath there where the hamstring is attached to. I'm going to take double thumb contact either side of the sciatic nerve and then once you bring your head back as I bring your leg into extension. So hip is in flexion, leg over the section and your dorsiflex the foot and then come back. So as you see, I'm not in a hurry here. I'm just going to work my way down. Are you doing okay there? Yep. And back. We're getting a little tighter here in the mid part. <laughs> Good. So I would do the same procedure and hold it, but I'd work all the way down here, right to the back of the knee here, the popliteal area. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you actually go face down. So the interesting thing about um, entrapment of the sciatic nerve is that we, a lot of times they'll talk about specific structures. They'll say, oh, it must be the piriformis muscle here. But in reality, direct attachment or a tethering or a compression on the nerve from an anatomical structure only occurs in about 15% of cases. What's more common is if we actually follow the sciatic nerve, either medial or lateral, to the nerve will get fibrous bands. These fibrous bands can actually have either strictly fibrotic or they can have a vascular component to them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work my way around some of the common entrapment sites and see if we can't actually free up the nerve a little bit and then go back and do some flossing. So right across from the trochanter here, straight up, we'll get the piriformis muscle here. And I'm gonna bring this up here. I'm actually gonna bring the table down just a little bit here. You okay? Yep. Okay, so we're going to just go right across. Bring the leg internal. Feeling that a bit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm not digging straight down like this. I'm actually just placing it on here and I'm moving my arm a little bit lateral and bring the leg into internal rotation here. Okay. So, even though I said it only occurs about 15% of the time where we get direct compression from an anatomical structure, we still want to go to the most common entrapment sites. And I'm going to move down just a little bit here. And this will be the superior glomeruli and obturator 
where it gets entrapped just on the edge of the piriformis muscle. Doing okay there? Oh yeah. That was not as bad as the other no, one. No, it wasn't actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel as much tension. Yeah. And then I'm going to move down a little bit more here. And then I'm going to get just on the edge of the quadratus femoris. Now this is a little bit different because I'm going to get in there. And then I'm going to actually take the leg into external rotation. And I'm going to bring a little bit more into oh. internal. You're feeling that a bit, yeah, aren't you? That is. I can feel the tension there quite a bit. Yeah. And then we're going to move our way down from here, actually on the hamstrings. And a lot of times people don't realize that every time we have an injury, there's a change in the fascia. These are either thickens or we start to develop adhesions around the area. So if you have a previous uh, history of a lot of hamstring injuries, that in itself may be enough to actually create a tethering of the hamstring. Now for the hamstring, I'm going to get on the middle part here, let this up, try and relax a little bit. Get in there, and then I'm just going to kind of work my way back and forth here. Feel that quite a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Down a little bit more, and across. Okay, now I found a point here that's actually pretty tight. Yep. So I'm yep. going to try and loosen that up a bit. Now, this is where we're going to open it up a little bit, bring the leg down, extend the knee, and I'm going to bring the foot into dorsiflexion. Same time, I'm going to take my elbow and actually create a superior traction here. Are you okay? Yep. You can really feel that nerve pop up though, can't you? Yeah. And back. So let's move down just a little bit farther here. Again, we're going to kind of work our way across here. And I could either move on the medial side or the lateral side of the sciatic nerve until I find a restriction. And I'm going to go back and forth and just not pushing too hard, but applying a bit of pressure. You okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, a little bit there. And I'm going to bring this down once again. <laughs> Okay, and take your time with this, and then bring the foot into dorsiflexion. Good. Now I'm going to move down just a little bit farther, closer to the knee, taking it back and forth. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's that restricted there. No, I thought you know about there. Okay, then yeah. down until I bring it into tension, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can feel it. Okay, good. So. What we did is we went in and I initially started to floss the nerve. The first part was actually just so that I could find how much tension we had in the area. Then I went in and loosened it up and started to do a little bit of cross friction, mobilization, releasing. That cross friction itself will help to produce more of the lubricant between the different layers of tissue, the hyaluronic acid. Now, let's have you lie on your side face towards me again. It's here. Okay, so first of all, you've got tight hamstrings anyways. Yeah. But you certainly couldn't straighten your leg that much previously. Not at all, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back here, and I'm going to have you take your head back into extension. And then I'm going to put a little bit more. Now I can actually get in a little bit deeper and hold that. In back. So I can't reach inside the body and pull the nerve through the tissue, but by using the motion of the patient in conjunction with what we're doing here, I can certainly get the nerve to glide a little bit easier through there. Are you okay? Yeah. Back. And again. Back. So the treatment is not with this hand, it's strictly with my right arm here and I'm going from supination into pronation, creating a little bit of stress there. Yeah, give that dorsiflex. flex. Good. And then again, we'll get on the hamstring here. Head back. Dorsal flex. Yeah, there's no way you could have gotten this no. far before. <laughs> That's opened up quite a bit. Yeah. And again. Good. Back. And again. Now, let's try something here. I'm going to have you bring your head forward, chin or okay. chest there. So what I'm doing here is we're actually creating some curvature here. We're pulling the spinal cord in this direction, but we're also going to traction it down distally. So in other words, this is tensioning, not just flossing. Okay, a little bit more tension there? Yeah. Quite a bit. There's yeah. no way you could have done this initially. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, now, just so you can feel it, take your head back. <laughs> you feel the pressure come off there? Yeah, weird, yeah. yeah. 
I could literally feel the nerve gliding underneath my fingers here. Yeah. Uh, it's great when you're working on somebody and you want to make sure that you really get on there and use your tactile sensitivity to actually feel the area so you can feel when it releases. Yeah. Okay, this is really powerful work for this common problem. Of course, we would take these techniques and also combine it with joint manipulation. And of course, we're going to prescribe functional exercises.